Today we're installing a Mad Jack seat cover designed to fit a Yamaha Drive front seat. To remove the armrest of the seat bottom, we're going to use an H5 tip and a 10 millimeter socket and a cordless drill. To install the seat cover, we're going to use a long nose crown stapler, 3/8 staples, a staple puller, and sharp scissors. You'll notice during this video that I keep the staple gun at a slight angle. This is so that you don't puncture through the cover. Also, some Yamaha Drive seat bottoms are made of a very dense plastic. You may have to raise your PSI to compensate. To begin, we're going to remove the driver's side armrest using the 10 millimeter socket. For future reference, you may want to mark the left and the right or the driver and the passenger side armrest. Now that you have your armrest removed, we're going to take our H5 bit tip and we're going to remove the front seat hooks and retain the hardware as well. Now we're ready to install our seat cover. We're going to use a black with white stripe seat bottom cover. This is specifically designed for this seat bottom. You want to pull it down over the seat bottom just like this. Flip the cushion over. Now, you just want to finish pulling it tight. Before we begin stapling, you'll notice that the fabric around the seat bottom is of equal distance from the plastic to the edge of the cover. We're going to start on the back cover. You want to pick it up, make sure that your seam is on the outside of your cushion. Once your seam's in the right spot, we're going to take one staple and tack it in. All right, now on the complete opposite corner, we're going to do the same thing. You want to pull it to where your seam matches the outside of your cushion. Take your two thumbs, pull on it. See, here we are. We're going to put another tack in here. Now that we have that second corner done, we're going to move to our third corner. We're going to repeat the same process we did on the other side. You want to pull until your seam matches the outside of your cushion. Put one more staple over here. Now we're going to move to the final corner. You want to pull any more slack out. Make sure that seam's on the edge of your cushion. One more staple. So at this point, we have four staples total, one in each corner. Now that we have all four corners secured, we're going to staple our seams in the middle of our cushion cover. You'll notice we're starting on the back of the cushion. We're going to leave the front side of the cushion for later. What you want to do is pull right here on this seam, pull the slack out, and we're going to straddle the seam and put two staples here and here. That's going to hold our seam. Just like that. Next, we're going to move over to our closest seam and do the same thing. You should have the equal amount of fabric hanging over the edge. If you pull too much, you're pulling too hard. If you're not pulling hard enough, they won't match up. Next, we're going to do our two outermost seams. We'll start on my right. Now that we stapled our seam here, we'll come back later and trim up our fabric and clean this up around this hump here. Staple the other side. Now we're going to go ahead and finish our last seam up. Now that we have all four seams secured, we're going to move to the front side of the cushion. 
So now, on the front side of our cushion, this is where the big hump is. So we're going to again start on the same two middle seams. If you take your thumbs, roll it up under the cover like this, you can pull more fabric and get your cover tighter to your cushion. We're going to put two staples on the seam once again, just like that. Now we're going to move over to the next seam. You'll notice that our fabric is about the same length. Because we pulled it so tight, you can see our hump now. Now we're going to go back to our outer seams. Now when you pull this seam, you're going to cover up your holes here. We'll come back and cut around that later. You'll notice on the outside seam, I pulled a little extra fabric. This is to allow the cover to sit inside of that molded foam. Now we're going to do the opposite seam. Now that we have all of our seams secured, we're going to come back in and finish stapling off the middle in between our seams. You don't want to pull too much fabric here, you just want to pull it tight enough to not leave any wrinkles. Space it about a half an inch. So at this point, you'll notice we stapled in between our seam here. We're going to staple here and then here to last. Again, you don't want to pull the fabric too hard, just enough to keep it tight. We have our seam stapled off. You'll notice that we're about a half inch to a, anywhere from a quarter to a half inch away from the edge of the cushion. You don't want to get too close. We're going to repeat this process on the other side. Now we have our seam stapled and everything in between. Next, we're going to work on our sides. We're going to leave our corners for last. Now that we're on the side, it doesn't matter which side you start on. You want to use your seam on the edge of your cushion as a guide. You want to pull it tight, but not too tight where it starts swimming on the edge of your cushion. So now you'll see we stapled a couple in the middle. Now we're going to work our way to the outside edges. This is to make sure that we keep our seam straight. As you're going along the side, just be sure to keep checking, make sure your seam's straight. We'll come back later before we do our armrests and trim up this fabric so we can reattach our armrests. Now we're going to move on to the opposite side and do the same thing. Finish up my edges. Now, we're going to work on our corners. When you start on your corner, First thing you want to do is work out this excess. So if you pull on that excess, you can fold it over. If you do fold it over, just straddle that fold. We're going to go ahead, since we have a seam on this corner, go ahead and staple that seam first. Here where we have this extra, we're going to pull it in the middle. We'll now have two humps. We're just going to straddle those humps. We're going to finish up our corner. It's not a problem if you overlap, as long as everything is flat and stapled. Now we're going to finish stapling here and move on to the next corner. 
Now we're going to start on the opposite corner. Again, if you have a seam in that corner, go ahead and staple the seam first. Pull out any loose fabric. Repeat this on all four corners. Perfect. Now that we have all of our corners nailed, we're going to cut the fabric here on the edges. This is where our armrest goes and mount. What we're going to do is we're going to make a cut here and here with our scissors. We can go about an inch and a half, about an inch on that side of the corner. This will allow our armrest to go into the channel. And you just want to tack this. That's it. Same thing on the other side. And we're cutting right along where the armrest slides in, as you can see. We're going to repeat this process on the other side. If you want to, you can take a couple of staples and staple here. Next, we're going to trim here and here and tack this as well. What we've done is cut right here at the side of the hump and the inside of this channel here. Tack that in. You can come back and trim this with your scissors. I'm going to cut along this channel again here and again on the slope here. Fold this down. Tack it, and pull any excess, put your tack there. I'm going to repeat this process on the back side. On this side, this is the front of the cushion. We want to cut out for our holes. Now we're just going to tack the loose fabric to secure our cover. Be sure to check, make sure all corners and all the seams are stapled. Once everything's secured, your seat cover looks good. We're going to install our armrests. We're going to start with our driver's side. It's the shorter of the two. Using the retained hardware, make sure all four bolts are hand started before tightening. Now we're going to attach our passenger side. Last, we're going to attach our hinges. Now that we have our armrests and our hinges attached, we're now finished installing the seat cover on the bottom. Next, we're going to move to the lean back cushion. Now we're going to install the seat cover on the lean back cushion. Included in the seat cover kit is a Hydem strip which we'll need for the lean back. But for now, we're gonna install our seat cover. You'll notice the lean back cover has a big curve seam. This is the top. We're gonna to take our seat cover, stretch it out over the cushion, flip it over. 
on the Yamaha Drive lean back, as you can see, you're not going to be able to hide the outside edge of your fabric in this cavity here. That's what all the extra items for. We're going to staple our seat cover on this face of the back of our lean back cover. Just like we did on the seat bottom, we're going to start in one corner, doesn't matter which corner. You want to put one staple and then move to the complete opposite corner and tack that side as well. Again, just like we did on the bottom, you want to use your seam as a guide on the edge of the cushion on how far you want to pull your fabric. If you have to put more than one staple in a corner, it's okay. We staple the corners first to use them as a guide, make sure that we're not starting off with a crooked cover. Now that we have all four sides, you just want to inspect, make sure that your seams are running along the outside of your cushion. If you're happy with that, we can start nailing our seams in the inside of the cover. When we start nailing our inside seams, we're going to start on the bottom and leave the top for last. The reason we're going to do that is because it's a much sharper curve. As you'll notice, we straddled our seam here again. You don't want to pull too much at the bottom because we're still going to have to pull here at the top. You'll also notice that we're pretty even with our fabric around the whole cushion so far. Now we're going to staple the top seams here and here. The easiest way to pull the fabric on the top of this cushion, again, use your thumbs and then kind of roll the cover around like this. You can also press down on the cushion and gain a little more fabric. We're going to put three staples in this seam. We want that seam to hold really good. We'll move on to the next seam. Three staples on that side as well. You can do four, it does not matter. You just want to make sure that it holds. Now we're going to come back to the bottom of the cushion and secure these outside seams. Start on either side, does not matter. Again, you're using your seam as a guide. Now that we have our seams stapled, we're going to come back and nail in between the seams here, here, and here. Again, just like the bottom, you don't want to pull it too tight. You just want to pull it tight enough where you're not pulling any extra fabric. We'll leave about a half inch gap in between each staple. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to finish up the middle last and I'll show you why. Now for the middle, you want to pull any slack out, so you can pull the middle a little more. You'll also notice that I put a few extra staples in, and also staple closer. That's because there's a lot of stress on the cover here. Now we're going to work on the sides. Then we're going to go in between the seams here, and save the top for last. Now, like we did on the seat bottom, you want to use your seam here as a guide along the edge of the cushion. We don't need to pull this one in much.
We have a few here in the middle. We're going to check our seam again and then finish out the edges. It's important here and along the top to keep your staples in somewhat of a straight line because that's what's going to hide under a hide them. Now we're going to repeat this process on the other side. Now that we have our sides and corners secured, we can finish stapling off in between our seams and corners here and here. You can pull this fabric as tight as you want to. You want the cover to sit inside of that molded foam as good as you can. When you pull this cover, remember to stay in a straight line with your staples because we have to use hide them. Now we're going to secure the bottom. There's no need to pull too tight here. We just want to secure the fabric. Now we're going to work on the top. You want to start in the middle by placing a few staples in the center and then alternate staples till you work your way out to the seams. This way the seat cover will sit nice and even all the way in the curve of the seat. As you'll see I didn't leave any spaces and I'm in a straight line. Check your seam, make sure you're still good. Alternate sides. Once you're happy, you can finish it out to your seams. Now we're going to take the hide strip that's included in your seat cover kit. You'll notice the channel that goes on the top side. This is where your staples are going to go. Now we're going to start our hide them at the bottom corner of our seat cover here. There's no need to run along the bottom, nobody's going to see it. Once you have it in place, you can always come back and pull any staples that doesn't completely go in the channel. You want to make sure you get it nice and straight and then put you one a little further away. You can always come back in and fill in the gaps and pull any staples that don't quite make it into the channel. This is to help keep your hide them straight. Around these corners, you might have to nail it a little closer. Now that we have our hide them on the line that we want, we're going to come back, clean up anything we missed, and fill in the gaps.
Now that we have our Hydem attached, you can trim off any excess fabric. Once that's done, you can reattach it to your cart and you're done installing your Mad Jacks front seat cover designed for a Yamaha drive.